Welcome back to Off the Ball. And the person of the week has got to be Kilkenny's Gavin Houlihan, who scored two penalties to help League Two Grimsby Town defeat Premier League Southampton 2 1 in the FA Cup on Wednesday night. Grimsby into the quarterfinals for the first time since 1939 and will now play Brighton. Gavin, good afternoon. Afternoon. What have the last few days been like then, Gavin? You must have the freedom of Grimsby, do you? Ah, uh, uh, yeah. Look, it's um, it's been a pretty pretty surreal couple of days. Um, obviously a lot of attention after the game the other night, and um, a lot of hype and stuff like that. So yeah, it's been um, yeah, it's been interesting, and uh, yeah, it's um, uh, safe to say I probably won't buy a drink in Grimsby for for for, uh, for the rest of my life anyway. And a lot of messages from well wishers, family, and friends. Yeah, literally, like it's it's just one of them. It's just so hard to to get back to everybody. Literally, I had, I had so many that it was just uh, my form was absolutely hopping. So, um, yeah, it's just trying to try to uh, get back to them over the last couple of couple of days or so. But um, no, it's 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 something I really appreciate as well. I'm just going through the run you've had here. You've beaten Plymouth Argyle, Cambridge United, Burton Albion, Luton Town, and now Southampton, Gavin. So all clubs uh, ahead of Grimsby in the league structure. Talk to us about the run. Well, I suppose it speaks for itself. It's a, it's, it's an incredible run, really. It's probably, it's probably the toughest run that anyone's ever done it. I think I heard a stat the other night. I think it's the first time anybody's beaten five teams above their level in the cup. Um, so that in itself is a bit of history for the club, which is, which is massive. Um, but yeah, it's uh, like looking back on that first game, even the, you know, the first game against Plymouth. You know, they were flying high. I think they're still flying high in League One. We thought that was going to be a tough, tough ask at, at the time. Um, and then obviously once you get the first one out of the way and then onto Cambridge, onto Burton, and before you know it, it's, you're just kind of getting a bit of momentum and on a bit of a roll. So um yeah, we've I suppose we've we've earned it. We've uh, we've done it the hard way and uh, you know, we've reaped the benefits. You're sixteenth in League Two, Gavin. But when you joined the club, you weren't even in the football league proper. No, that's right, yeah. Uh, obviously joined last year, um nearly nearly coming up uh, a year ago. Um Club was obviously in the national league at the time, um, which you know, in in my eyes, joining the club at the time, the ambition had to be to get out of the league. It's, it's such a massive club; it, it shouldn't have been at that level in the first place. So, um, and that was tough enough as as it was, because only two teams go up from that league, which makes it uh, like unbelievably difficult. So, um, and we managed to do it through the playoffs, luckily. So it's a fishing town in the northeast of England, and you had a really passionate support down there at Southampton the other night. Harry and inflatables. Uh, I don't think they were allowed to have them in. Harry the Haddock. Harry the Haddock. You know, they, no, they eventually got them in. There was a bit of um, bit of controversy. I don't think Southampton at first were allowing it, and then I think they, in the end, they, they they kind of gave into it. Um, which I'm glad they did because you know it was a it was a it was a sight to see the other night seeing uh, you know thousands of inflatable fish in, in the stand. Uh, a bit of a surreal sight to see. So. Um, and it, you know, it's great for the fans. It's part of the tradition as well. Um, it's a tradition that goes back years, obviously in the cup. Um, so no, it, it, it was good for for that to you know to be allowed. What are the comfort levels like, Gavin, playing against a Premier League club? Um, yeah, look, I suppose it's you know you see straight away the you know how sharp they are and how physic physically strong and quick they are. Um, so yeah, it took I suppose first 10, 15 minutes. It was a bit of a you know, kind of feeling them out and and get, getting adjusted to, to, to the pace of the game. Um, but I felt once we did that, once we kind of, you know, got that first 15, 20 minutes out of the way, we, we settled into the game and, and, you know, managed to just kind of stamp our own kind of a, authority on the game, which, which I thought was pretty impressive. And, um, yeah, no, no really good test, a massive test, um, you know, to obviously established Premier League players. So it's, um, you know, it, it, it's brilliant to, you know, to, to come up against players like that and test yourself. You scored two penalties, as we know. Are you a regular penalty taker for Grimsby? Have you been taking penalties for years? I haven't, to be honest. Um, not for Grimsby. Anyway. I've taken a few, you know, uh, in the past for previous clubs and stuff. But um, yeah, I kind of uh, was down to pecking order a bit. Um, we actually got a penalty last Saturday against Leighton Orient in the league, um, and obviously one of one of the other boys took it, missed it unfortunately, and then I kind of had to put my hand up and say, "All right, well, I'm taking the next one whenever we get it." Um, you're not expecting it to be so soon after, and to, to obviously get two penalties, which is which is very unusual. So um, yeah, you just have to obviously be ready when when the chance comes up. Is there a difference between the real time drama of a penalty against a Premier League club in an FA Cup fifth round tie versus doing it in training? 
Oh yeah, massively. Yeah, like you can't you can't replicate it. Um, I suppose. Look, it's it's just you, you you can practice it on the training pitch. You can practice your technique, and then that but that kind of all goes out the window. Then when you're when you're when you're stood in front of you know a big six foot five keeper, um, Premier League goalkeeper. So you kind of yeah you have to uh, really try and keep it cool and um, especially in front of our end in the second penalty. It was just uh, about showing a bit of composure because. Very hard to kind of look up and see four and a half thousand Grimsby fans and, and get a bit, bit distracted about what you're actually trying to do. So, um, but that you know, that was the main thing. Because you put it the same way, you put it to the left, the keeper's right. So was it the case, Gavin, that you were more nervous the second time round or more confident, given you had the first one in? Yeah, do you know, I, people have kind of asked me that already, and I'd say it was probably more not nervous, but just because of the the long wait with the VAR for the first one, um, it just seemed to take forever for for them to give it and I was kind of stood there with the ball waiting for it to be given and so I think the first one I was probably a bit more nervous but the second one I just like I said I just I, just, I was just confident that I knew where I was going um, and it was just about obviously like I said just 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 continuing what I'd obviously practice or had in my head um, and just just trying to get a good connection on it and hopefully hopefully it goes in I'm sure you watched the World Cup you've Harry Kane having in the situation he missed the second one and Kylian Mbappe then scored twice in the final you know yeah, look, it's it's. I don't think many players will um, prepare for getting two penalties in a game. It's it's very unusual to you know to get two penalties in a game. Um, so obviously you practice you practice obviously to take one, but then obviously when you get the second one, you're probably thinking, well, well which side do I go? Do I go the same side? Do I change it? Change your technique or or, or, or what side you go? So, um, but yeah, no, I kind of had in my head for both penalties. Um, you know, I wasn't really kind of. Uh, like indecisive, uh, kind of had my mind made up early, and I think that was important just to just to make your mind up and stick with it. What was the celebrations like after the game? Uh, to be fair, they were fairly fairly tame actually. Uh, obviously, like I said, we had the we had the, the league game now in in, in Carlisle on Saturday. Um, so yeah, we just got back to the hotel, and uh, you know the staff they allowed us one point, so I had a point of Guinness, uh, which was which was <laughs> which was well earned after. Um, but yeah, it was just just the one point. Uh, unfortunately, it was pretty tame. Um, and then we got back on the road. We stayed overnight, obviously after the game. Got back on the road um, yesterday, and then we're in again training today, preparing for the game tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow. You were at Hull to start your career, didn't you? You played after leaving Kilkenny. You went to Hull as a a youth player. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. I moved. Um, that one, I moved. Two thousand eight, I moved over. I was sixteen when I moved over. So yeah, two thousand eight. So it seems seems a while ago now. And. I'm still living in Hull to this day, so it's kind of like a second home to me now. What was it like then moving back to the League of Ireland? Were there difficult days around that time? Yeah, I suppose. Look, it's like it's like any player. You you'll have probably spoke to you know a few over the years that coming home is probably not the last resort in a way. But obviously, when you go across the water, you wanna you, you wanna give it a good go, and you feel like you're kind of not not a, not a failure, but you feel like you haven't obviously achieved what you wanted to achieve. So. Coming back was difficult. It was a decision I had to kind of make. It was I was probably a bit reluctant to do it, um, but looking back on it now, it's it's probably the best thing I've done for my career because it gave me an opportunity to come back and get that first team exposure and you know get games under my belt um, and kind of I suppose like build like build a, a career and a reputation for myself and 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 I think that's hold, like held me in good stead going forward then and um, gave me the opportunity to come back across the water again. Yeah, you won the FAI Cup at Cork in twenty sixteen. So you know what the jeopardy is like of a big run and a big day. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Great memories. Um, like absolutely loved it. And that was that was probably one of my standout memories from my time playing back home. Um yeah, brilliant day, obviously. Um great celebrations after that. So yeah, it it, it does, I suppose it does uh it does it does stand to you when you have experiences like that. And like I said, that's why I feel, I feel like it's 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 probably benefited me uh, coming back to like coming back to the League of Ireland and experiencing highs and lows, um, and then obviously taking that taking that forward in in the future. You played for Waterford, played for Cork, Galway, Drogheda. Um, what were the things then, maybe specifically, that you did to improve your game so that you could go back to Hartlepool and now Grimsby and to be doing so well? Um, I suppose like you you like you come from. Academy football over here. You've probably heard heard it said a couple of times. That you can't you can't replicate playing first team football. It's completely different playing you know reserves under twenty threes football. Um, you know it's it's very like obviously there's no pressure on the games. Obviously it's just about 
uh, it's all kind of very nice and, and whatever. But then you come back and, you know, you're playing against players who are fighting for their livelihoods and the games matter. You know, it's it's intense. It's, you know, it's it, it's a tough environment to be in. Um, so stuff like that just kind of stood to me and, you know, just obviously realising the, you know, how um, how important, you know, every every game that you play is and how important, you know, every win and every every success that you have is. Uh, David Meyer is a friend of the show and uh, he's he's often on on a Saturday with us. I, I think he lives out that part of the, the woods and he's a midfielder as well. Do you ever catch uh, David? Do you ever talk to him? I, I see him see him the odd time. Uh see him the odd time. Yeah, I think I spoke to him a, a couple of times. Um but yeah, no, I heard yeah, he's he's obviously still living this way and he had he had obviously he's a bit of a legend at at Hull, obviously, with the promotion and, and, and stuff like that and the FA Cup run. Um so yeah, he's uh, you know, he's he's well thought of over here. Are you a six or an eight, uh, Gavin? What's your preferred midfield position? I'm an eight, more so. Yeah, I like to, um, I like to go box to box, but I'm, I'm more. I would say I'm probably more attack minded. I like to get into the box, score goals, and um, create things. Um, but yeah, I could, I could, could, could do either role, and have done over, over my career. And I suppose learn to do both roles, which is important. Have you noticed a change since you went back to England in terms of the technical quality of the game and how the game is evolving and progressing over there? Yeah, I have, I have massively, and I suppose from when I moved over when I was sixteen in two thousand eight, I, I, I've just seen the difference in, in the like you said, the, the you know the quality and the um, you know the quality of player, quality of play, and stuff like that. And I suppose you're seeing because the the top leagues, the Premier League, is is so strong now. You're having players who are having to drop down the levels. So even like the the, the lower leagues, League One, League Two. Even the National League, obviously, I've played in it with Hartley, people played in it with Grimsby last year. Um, there's some like really, really good players having to kind of drop down to that level to to um, make a career for themselves, basically. So it's um, very competitive, and there's some there's some really, really good quality. How would the quality compare from the League of Ireland you're playing in the last few years to what you're playing with now with Grimsby, for example? Yeah, I've been asked this a couple of times, and. <laughs> It's a difficult one because the way I kind of look at the league back home, I, I would say like the, the, like you know the top teams. Obviously, you have your Shamrock Rovers, the Dundalks over the years. Obviously, Cork when I was there, um, you know would probably would probably hold their own in League One, I think easily. Um, and then there's a bit of a bit of a gap then between you know the kind of bottom half of, of the of the league back home. So, I would say it's probably it's probably similar in ways. I would say some of the some of the top teams back home would probably play League League Two and then the rest would uh, or League One and then the rest would probably easily fit into League Two, I'd say. Do you catch up much with, with uh, many Irish lads over there? Uh yeah, I do, yeah. No, I, I, I speak to quite a few of them. Um a few that I've played over the years. Obviously when I was at home we had a massive Irish contingent there, which Paul McShane, Robbie Brady, um to name a few, Jamie Devitt. Uh so there's quite a few that I still still keep in touch with and um you know, it's good to good to catch up with them, and I suppose it's just that thing. You know, Irish players that move over kind of look out for each other because we have to over here. So that's just uh, that's just the way it is. Do you follow the hurlers? Love it, absolutely love it. Yeah, yeah. Well, right. I'm, yeah. Well, I'm from Kilkenny, so it's 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 a religion, isn't it? So, um, yeah, I I, uh, I don't think you, you you have a choice really when you when you're growing up in Kilkenny. You've got to wear. Uh, it's got you got to live and breathe it really. Um, played a bit obviously when I was younger, but uh, decided to go the football route. Um, which which uh, yeah, I'm glad now that, that I did. What's the club? Oh, uh, the village, James Stevens. Ah, Mr. Cody. Yeah, yeah, the village man. Yeah, so um, yeah, no, I played for the village obviously uh, when I was younger. Had had great days growing up. Um, you know, until I moved over to the UK when I was 16, like I said. So. Um, no, it's brilliant. And obviously went to St. Kieran's College as well, which is again just is another producer of of, of uh you know top Kilkenny hurlers over the years. So um again if you if you want to go to that school you have to uh, you have to have your hand in a in a bit of hurling at least. Brian Cody is some legend, isn't he? Oh absolutely. He's a he's a god, he's a god in, in Kilkenny, he really is. Um he'll be he'll be uh, sadly missed whenever whenever he decides to to step away, which is I suppose everybody's dreading it. Yeah, of course. He's back with the village now, isn't he? Um, yeah. So just in terms of transferable skills, are there any transferable skills from hurling to, to soccer? Um, yeah, I sp- look, I suppose, yeah, there is in a way. It's obviously, I don't know, to play hurling, you have to be super fit. Um, and I mean, you look at, 
you look at some of the some of the teams now that you know they're 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 professional athletes pretty much like they're they're training pretty much every day so they're in unbelievable condition so I think that obviously um over the years obviously the intensity of of of, of hurling and and, and, and gas sports obviously does stand to you when you obviously uh, take that into a football environment. Brighton next up then for Grimsby. You must be observing Evan Ferguson's progression with interest, like us all. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, he looks looks like one for the one for the future, and obviously, uh, you know, great for the international team to have players like him come coming through. And um, no, I think obviously it looks it looks positive. We have a lot of good young players coming through coming through the system, and um, you know, hopefully in a few years' time we'll have a. We'll have another team uh, that can compete on the you know the world stage again, and no, it'll be good to come up against them and um, you know pit my ways against them. Sometimes people mock the magic of the cup and the FA Cup and, and what it represents, but for a, a place like Grimsby, it must be a massive game changer. Yeah, it's huge. It's it's uh, I suppose look at it in a way it kind of puts Grimsby on the map but as such. It's it's you know it's the most famous cup competition in the world, so it's 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 been shown all over the world. The highlights been shown all over the world and. Um, you know, it's great exposure for the club, um, and you know, financially it has massive, massive benefits for the club, and it's just great for the, the, you know, the whole community. It gives everybody in the community of Grimsby a lift. It does a lot for ordinary people, doesn't it? An underdog story doesn't matter if it's Cork City or Grimsby or Kilkenny or anywhere. Um, like a few years ago, did a Sasha Baron Cohen movie kind of mocking Grimsby, and now it's been mm. celebrated. So it's, it's, it just says something a lot for. The, the power of dreams that still can exist even in this world where you have the big Premier League clubs with the big investment. Mm-hmm. Oh no, absolutely, and that's so. That's why we why we love the game. Um, you know, it's it, it's so unpredictable. You, you just you just never know. Um, and I suppose we took that mindset going into the game the other night. At the end of the day, yeah, look, ultimately we're we're under no illusions. There, you know, a, a good few levels above us and um, earn a hell of a lot more money than us, but. At the end of the day, once the whistle goes, it's eleven v eleven. Um, you know, they still breed and do everything the exact same as us. So it's uh, yeah, eleven v eleven, man v man. So um, you know, if you're you know if you're up for the up for the challenge and up for the fight, which we were the other night, you can you can cause upsets. You talked there about having one pint after the win over Southampton. What's the routine like for you during the week? Like the the, the training regimen, the the diet, the fitness. Uh... How, how does that all kind of work out for you? Is it something that you've got, like, you almost have to have military precision around? Yeah, it just becomes, like, obviously, when, you, when you've when you done it for so long, it becomes second age to really, you just, yeah, you obviously just know what your body needs, both, like, obviously, what you're, you're, you're eating, you're drinking, um, you know, the recovery, recovery that you, your body needs and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, look, having done it for so long, it just becomes, becomes second nature and um, we train four or five times a week and it's it's pretty um yeah it's pretty i would say repetitive like but it's 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 like it's um you know you know you know what you're going to get every day and it's it's it becomes a bit of a habit you must have a real bond all of you together now at the moment in that dressing room yeah uh, yeah i i think we did beforehand obviously having gone through the, you know the playoffs last year which was an absolute roller coaster of emotions um and then we've added added new faces in the summer and they're just They've come in and bought into what we're about. Um, you know, there's no, there's no egos, there's no big time Charlies or any, any of that stuff. Everyone's, everyone's in it together. Um, so yeah, it's just brought the, you know, that kind of bond, kind of closer together after, after nights like the other night. Just before we wrap up, Gavin, uh, like if you're going again and and maybe following the career that you had, like you left very young to go to Hull. Now with Brexit, it's harder for Irish players to to leave until they're they're eighteen. Would you have wanted to do things differently? Are you? Would you be still advocating players trying to get over to England to follow their career or another country? Um, I suppose. Look at when I moved when I was sixteen. I don't think the League of Ireland was as strong as it as it is now. So I think that obviously helps having having a strong league back home gives players um, better opportunity to obviously develop. Uh, you know, as as players and as as individuals. So I think that helps. Obviously having. Um, you know, strongly back home, um, but yeah, at the time for me, it was just it was a no brainer. Really, it was, you know, if you wanted to try and pave a career for yourself, you know, coming across the UK was was the place to be. Um, so no, I, I I wouldn't have done anything differently. It's it's um, you know, look, I've had the high the other night, obviously, which is you know one of the highlights of your careers. But you have a lot of lows in there. But I think they're 
they were kind of um, you know make you as a you know as a player and, and as a person. So it's it's all just a good learning curve. And dreams are what this is made of, as I said a bit earlier on. Manchester United FA Cup final at Wembley wouldn't be bad, would it? Or even a semi final appearance at Wembley. Semi final, yeah, it's obviously that's what I mean. Just saying it that we're one game away from the semi final at Wembley is just you know it's baffling really it's mind blowing so um, yeah look I was I'm a massive Man U fan so I was I was hoping for United at Old Trafford um, in the quarterfinals wasn't meant to be so we're just going to have to go and turn Brighton over and then hopefully we'll get them in the semis Asimiro and Gavin Hoolan I can see it in the future <laughs> uh, thanks so much for speaking to Off the Ball this afternoon no you're welcome my pleasure